Well, Mom, Dad saw an ad in the paper for a, a place called uh, H&E Auto Parts, and they said they need a parts puller. And I said, well, you know, I'm, I'm pretty mechanical. I know parts, and I know, you know, where they go and all this. I said, I'll go down there and apply. So it was right downtown, about a block and a half from the courthouse in Fort Worth and on Weatherford Avenue. And I went in there, and it was a really run-down old two-story building that had stuff piled everywhere. And uh, I told them I you know, wanted a job, and they said, well, fill out this application. So I did. And then I sat down with the owner. The owner was a guy named Herbie Paul, and he was real heavy set, always smiling and happy and, you know, shaking hands, just a, just a good guy. And his brother's name was Eddie, and Eddie ran a junk store up on the North Main where he sold everything from outdated floor mats to junk, you know. But that's how they come up with the name H&E. And uh, so uh, I interviewed with him, and and, uh, and he said, well, I'll hire you. And he says, I'm going to pay you $1.85 an hour. And I'm thinking, boy, that's not much money. But I said, working at the commissary, I was making $5 an hour average, and I was working just on tips. So, uh, so he, I said, okay, I'll take it. And so I started working there, and, of course, I didn't realize how – hard that work was and and how hot that building was no air conditioning nothing and around all of those uh, tailpipes and mufflers and all the metal is so hot you couldn't even touch it hardly when you're pulling the parts but i worked there you know all summer uh, and you know made made some money but when i got my first check after i got hired uh, Mr. Paul had told me that, that I was getting a dollar eighty-five an hour, and I calculated it out, and I said that ain't that ain't right. And so I had mom and dad look at it, and they go, No, no, you're you're making a dollar fifteen cents an hour. And so the next Monday I go into work, I said, Mr. Paul, I said, uh, I think there was a mistake on my paycheck. He said, What's wrong? And I said, Well, you, you told me I was going to make a dollar eighty-five an hour, and I said this comes out to a dollar fifteen an hour. He said, oh, oh, I guess I didn't tell you that while you're on probation and learning the job, you're only going to make $1.15. But the very next week, I got elevated to $1.85. So I guess he assumed that I wouldn't catch it and uh, just go along with it. But anyway, but I worked there all summer and everything was good. And it came time to enroll for college. And I, I told, went in and talked to Mr. Paul. And I said, uh, I'm, I'm going to have to quit. I said, I'm starting college and um so you know i won't be able to work like i have been and uh he said uh well wait a minute he said you don't have to quit he said i'm proud of you for wanting to go to college and i want you to keep working for me and i want you to work whatever hours you want to work and he said go sign up for your classes and come back and give me your schedule and we'll figure out you know what hours you can work and i thought wow that's great so uh I signed up for, I think it was 16 or 18 hours because I was trying to make up for the time that I had uh, goofed off my freshman year. And it came back to where I could work like from 1 o'clock in the afternoon until 5 when the store closed and uh, and, and then all day Saturday. And uh, right after I, I started that regiment, uh, Mr. Paul said, well, look, he says, uh, you're going to need to get a commercial driver's license. And he says, we, we deliver parts to our other two stores uh, after hours. And he said, we pull the parts all day, and then we put them in this van, the step van, and deliver them to these other two stores. And that's a, it takes a couple hours to do that. He says, so you can get more hours, uh, get your commercial license, and you can have that job besides the one pulling pulling the parts so i said that's even better well it ended up i was working almost 40 hours a week because i'd work from one until like seven every day and then i worked all day saturday and uh, the only day i had off was sunday and of course school was uh was it was really hard i mean i like i said first year i didn't do anything and it showed in my second year but I muddled through it and uh, didn't have much time to myself, and uh, and, I, and I had money in my pocket. I was putting money in the bank. So anyway, so it turns out that uh, everything was good there, and, and I was had a good thing going on. And then all of a sudden, uh, Herbie Paul needed a bookkeeper. Well, some girl came in there and applied for the job, and I noticed when she came in, I said, boy, that's really a cute-looking girl there. 
uh, I'd like to get to know her. Well, he hired her as a bookkeeper. And so one afternoon, shortly thereafter, she was walking home uh, from work. She had an apartment that was about two or three blocks away. And I said, well, I'm, I'm leaving now. I said, can I give you a ride? And she said, well, I'd love that. Thank you. And we introduced each other and, and talked on the way over there. Well, it kind of flourished from there on to, uh, to a little bit of dating. We didn't have much time for that because of my school and everything. But uh, that, her name was uh, Nellie Jean Neuenswander. And uh, so uh, things led to other things, and we ended up getting engaged. And, and my, of course, my mom and dad said, no, 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 you've got to finish your college and all this kind of stuff before you can do that. And I said, no, I said, this will work out good because, you know, uh, she's got a job and i got a job, so we'll have two incomes. And I said, it's going to work out good. Uh, well, shortly after that, Mr. Paul fired her because she didn't have a clue what she was doing. She really wasn't a bookkeeper. She just bluffed her way into the job. Uh, so she had to go somewhere else and find a job. She ended up finding a job at uh, Montgomery Ward Distribution Center, which is over on 7th Street. There's a big old uh, six or seven-story building that was at two blocks square, huge. And, of course, they had all kinds of administrative offices plus the the uh, distribution center where they ship parts out to all the other stores. And uh, so she went to work there. She actually made more money there than she was working for Herbie. Uh, but anyway, shortly after that, uh, we got married, and uh, and we got our own apartment. The first place that we got was uh, uh, a little garage apartment, and it was the size of the upstairs of a small two-car garage. And it was right off of uh, of the main drag in, on Camp Bowie, uh, and it was sixty eight dollars a month, all bills paid. And of course, it had no furniture, and of course that that went for a while because we didn't have any money to buy furniture. But we finally got enough in there to to have something to sit on and sleep on, and so that's the way we we went. And I would get up every morning and and. Uh, head off to school and work and stay in school till one o'clock or 1230 and get over to the auto parts store and work my butt off there till close to seven o'clock or maybe a little later sometimes. <clears throat> then I'd come home and have a, a, about two hours before I was so tired I needed to go to bed. Well, it really didn't give much time to study, and uh, which I wasn't the most uh, conscientious person in studying anyway. But it turned out I, I couldn't even go take a crap without taking a book with me to read because I just didn't have enough time to do all of it.